Welcome, thanks for joining. A big recession, if not a depression, is looming, a financial reset is in the air, and maybe even World War III. What can you do to prepare yourself if you are just a normal guy without a lot of savings? Many subscribers have asked that and I have to admit this is a really tricky question to answer. Because money gives freedom. With money you have a lot more options, you can move from one place to another, and you can sit out some years without income. Having just little savings makes this really tricky, because there seems also not to be much time left, and moving to a foreign country without some money as reserves is pretty dangerous too. It also depends if you have still a stable okay paying job at the place where you are and a family with kids in school and so on. In that situation I probably would check if I would have any relatives or friends outside the core conflict countries which are basically the Five Eyes countries, the United States, Great Britain, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, as well as most of the European Union. I would maybe check if I would have some relatives outside if they would be willing to rent you a room. You could just phrase it as a holiday trip, and you would pay for it for a decent amount. Not agreeing on it yet, but just checking the reaction. Make sure to offer a good price to give an incentive. If a war breaks loose and you are already there, and if you find a way not to be a burden for them, then maybe they would not want to send you back even if you run out of money, but need to be good people. Then I would very carefully listen to the news, and as soon as there is a direct military engagement with China or Russia, I would take that as the call for exit. Because the problem is if you are too late, then you may not be able to leave anymore. But even at that point, it may take some more years, you never know. Maybe planes would no longer be flying or citizens would not be allowed to travel anymore, and they might be forced to join the military as it was done in U. There they also prohibited wire transfers of money from your bank to a foreign entity, and in most cases any access to your own cash was limited to just a survival amount. So you would have to have this all set up before it happens. Also other countries might not be so friendly to refugees when this happens so they might not accept you into their country unless you can demonstrate already close ties to that country and financial independence. So a residence permit for such country would be very important to have ideally. Not to forget, maybe Trump did not build the wall to keep Mexicans from entering the U.S., but for the other way around, keeping Americans in one day. I would not be surprised at all if that would turn out that way. Definitively also make sure that your passports are renewed and have at least three years of validity. If you trust your relatives, you can also discuss all of this or send them some money as reservation for that room. Just to make sure they are kind of in debt to you to let you in when one day in the middle of the night you show up surprisingly. If you don't have a place to go, you can maybe check if there is a low-budget option somehow. So you could go to a cheap middle or South American country and just rent there a garage to put an RV in it, or if you rent even a little cellar room or a garage, that might be enough for a start. You could bring there some money, a camping toilet and some food rations so you would have something to start with which maybe just cost you $100 a month. It is certainly not great to live in such place for a longer time, but it is better than nothing. The problem is also how to convince your wife for this endeavor. I am in a similar situation, I am divorced and I have a kid, so I can't just go easily where I want to unless I would leave my kid behind, which I would never do. Now I am at least not in any of the high-risk countries that is good, but personally I would like to be a lot more rural than where I am now, but I just can't convince the other side, so that is quite a pain in the backside. So this might be a reason to stay where you are, or because of your job, your family, it is hard to just go somewhere without financial resources. In that case, I would try to build up at least a good resource of emergency food and water or water filters that you can use. And have warm sleeping bags and clothes too. I am personally not so much afraid of a direct hit of a nuclear exchange because I am, in theory, not close to potential impact areas. They are all many hundred kilometers away. So in theory, you could even stay in your house if it is a concrete build or go to the cellar. But the problem with all of this is that if something like that happens, it would cause a long-lasting complete breakdown of society. It is not something where you can just go into your bunker and two weeks later you get out. This would cause the entire food supply chain to break down. All food grown would be classified as contaminated so there would be nothing available. And this may be for years to come. All livestock, all supermarkets, all water in the lakes or in reservoirs would be no longer usable. So ideally you would have a supply of one or two years at home. But then if all craziness breaking loose, many people might try to steal that food from you the moment they suspect that you have any. You can't stay awake 24 hours every day to protect your family in this situation. It would be quite a big challenge. It would be like a real zombie apocalypse with hordes of people going after you.
and that is independent from if nukes exist or not and what levels of radiation are harmful and which ones not. There are certainly many discrepancies like with all these things, like babushkas who are still living in Chernobyl, eating vegetables grown from their contaminated gardens and they are fine, and cities like Hiroshima which should have been contaminated for at least a generation but surprisingly as soon as the blast was gone, they started to rebuild everything, had kids and moved on without major impacts. And then we had these blast videos, but when you look at them, the camera is not shaking a bit, or the clouds are not moving despite the explosion and all these little things. Maybe that is worth another video sometime. So a nuke attack might also be fake or less lethal than we assume but hard to tell in advance. Either way, the government would enforce similar actions and you might have no choice or other than letting them do with you what they want. Make no mistake, in that scenario there is no such thing as human rights anymore. They may force you to leave your property, even though you have much better resources there. Or they force you to accept some experimental medical treatments. Or you will only get Bill's Frankenfood. Or they could order to bring your kids away. You just would lose total control. It is definitively very challenging to survive this if you would stay in a place like that and with a surrounding society breakdown. Even if you are super prepared, you would also not want to sit in a bunker for one or two years. Which is maybe an option but again, these things are also very expensive, in particular if you plan to use them for more than two weeks. I think most of them are not catered for that. As an example, in Switzerland, they have all these bunkers, but there is no food or water or extended electricity in them. People should bring their own rations with them. And until today, despite all the threats going on, there was no official information on who should go into which bunker and what to take with them. So nobody would be prepared. Because if such thing happens then the whole reason would be to have as few people going through this as possible. This is all about reductions. As a result, even if you would make it there, there would be no food and no water so you would maybe stay there for 48 hours until society breakdown happens in there too. I also got told that they are not made for longer term stays. It is just for the first couple days at max, so even if you have a bunker or cellar you can hide in. The time after the impacts would be the real challenge without food, water, heat and millions of equally desperate people around. That is why I am skeptical of staying in these countries. Because on the other hand, if you happen to be on a deserted island when this happens, there would be hardly any impact on you at all. You would still catch your fish to eat, lay in the sun and life is fine. That's why I personally would prefer that option than sitting in a wet, dark and cold place without food and mayhem on the streets for the next 5 to 10 years. Another option could maybe be to buy or rent a similar small place not just in a foreign country, but in your home country, somewhere very remote. That would be probably also much better to have than to be stuck in a major city when this happens. And again, that would be less difficult to organize and cheaper. But the risk would be that they would come to remove you too. After considering all of this, you also need to keep in mind that it can of course also be that you organize all these things and then nothing happens at all, and it is all wasted. If you gave up your job, sold your house, and moved with your wife away to a place she hates or that also might not be completely safe, in particular with kids, then that can also be a really bad decision that destroys your life. So this is really a tough decision and you would have to make that yourself in the end. What definitively would not be a loss though is if you use the time to push your life into a better position. Get out of debt, sell stuff you don't need, size down and concentrate on less material things. Instead save money, don't keep it in the banks, maybe buy some gold. I personally don't trust the cryptos that much, but if so then at least something like Monero or Pirate Chain which is more private. But personally I have zero money in cryptos. Also then maybe start some online business or do one of these pushed green businesses. I know I have lots of hesitations with this too, but there is money to be made, and if you need it, then it is probably justifiable. You are not there to be the Jesus for the world sacrificing yourself. Your primary responsibility is to keep yourself and your family safe and to break free. If this requires to sell energy saving assessments for properties then that's justifiable. Just make sure to work on yourself and your ability to break free. And to have at least the basic survival necessities organized in case that things deteriorate completely. I think that would be a reasonable approach to these things that in the end, no matter what happens you have done the best possible that you could make out of the situation. One thing we all have to realize, life always comes with a death sentence, so we need to make the best of it as long as we can, but not to be too afraid if we can't, because sooner or later that happens to anybody. This is anyway just some wicked computer game. But that's another story. Hope that information was helpful. Thanks for watching and all the best to you.